Commutative property. We're going to learn all about the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication right here, right now. Hey, my name is Jason Jacobs, and I'm going to be your math teacher. I get right to the point, so let's get going. Let's play a little game. Add this up as quick as you can. Ready, set, go. You getting it? Right here. Add it up. Add it up. What did you get? Well, did you get 30? Because 30 would be the right answer. And here's a little trick. A lot of you probably went six plus seven is 13. 13 plus eight is, and like, that's daunting. But if you use the commutative property of addition, what you can do is rearrange those add-ins. So you rearrange those add-ins just the way you want. And you can do that in your head or right on the paper. Let me show you. So in this instance, I'm gonna use 10 pairs. 10 pairs add up to 10 easily. And we learned that in, in like first grade or so. So six pairs with four, I'm gonna take the six and the four, I'm gonna rewrite it six plus four. And this is what the community property is allowing us to do. Switch around the add-ins, as long as it's all addition or all multiplication, but not a mixture of both, right? You can't do it that way. But here, so I use the six and four, now the seven and three I can use. And now the uh, eight and two go together. Now that makes it real easy, because we have six plus four is 10, Seven plus three is 10, and eight plus two is also 10. And that's how we get 30 really, really quick instead of feeling like, like we gotta go left to right. And that is the commutative property of addition. So the commutative property of addition states, as long as it's all addition, A plus B is the same as B plus A. So let's do some examples, guys. Three plus two equals blank plus three. Now, I used to teach fourth grade, and a lot of times in fourth grade, the kids would put five here. Do you see why they would put five? But that is incorrect, because this equal sign says the same as. So three plus two is the same as what plus three? So if this side equals five, this side two must equal five. So five does not go there. But the commutative property means you can like switch them, swap them. So three plus two is the same as two plus three. And these are the type of problems that you'll see so why don't you guys try this one now? You can also do it with three add-ins or six add-ins, as long as it's all addition in this case. So five plus seven plus six is the same as blank plus five plus seven. Well, which one were we missing here, guys? That's right, we were missing the six. So the six goes here. And you might be thinking, oh, so whatever number's here goes there. That's just a coincidence, okay? Now let's do the commutative property of multiplication. And that states um, A times B is the same as B times A. So as long as it's all multiplication, you can rearrange the factors so that it can be done easier. Similar to what I did with the commutative property of addition right here. So five times two is the same as two times five. And the common mistakes, some, some of you might've thought to put 10 there. That would be wrong. And that's okay to make a mistake, but now you know. Five times two is the same as two times five. And let's look at this one. Six times two times five is the same as what times five times six? Well, in this case, six times two is 12, and then 12 times something might be a little more difficult. So I would notice maybe perhaps this two times five is 10, and, and multiplying by 10 is a lot easier. So maybe you wanna do, and this, by the way, should be multiplied. Maybe you wanna do two times five times six, because 10 times six is 60. So notice we just changed these factors around. We just um, switched the factors around. As long as it's all multiplication, I actually had an addition there. But that is the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. My name is Jason Jacobs. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Keep doing your math. Bye, guys. <laughs> Associative property, I marked on myself. We're gonna learn all about the associative property today. Guys, the associative property of addition and the associative property of multiplication. Hey, my name's Jason Jacobs. I'm gonna be your math tutor today. We're gonna have a lot of fun learning all about the associative property. Let's get going, guys. So check it out. The associative property of addition says when you have the quantity of A plus B, quantity of means there's parentheses there, or grouping symbols as they like to say. So the quantity of A plus B plus C as long as you keep these add-ins in the same order, as long as it's all addition, you can move the grouping symbol. So if it's all addition, you can take the grouping symbol from here, 
to here. So the quantity A plus B plus C is the same as A plus the quantity B plus C. And that's the associative property of addition. So if we have this, you have six plus the quantity four plus eight, as long as it's all addition, which it is, six plus four plus eight. So you keep the add-ins in the exact same order and you can, and you are allowed to move the parentheses from here to here. And you might say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, as you can see, this is a 10 pair. So tens are a lot easier. We're dealing with easier numbers anyway, but if you were dealing with more complicated numbers and you can make it easier, that's why you would want to do it. So instead of six plus 12, which might be harder if there are harder numbers, you can make a 10 pair like six plus four is 10 plus eight. At any rate, these two expressions are equal. Six plus 12 is the same as 10 plus eight. They're both 18. Hey, now for the associative property of multiplication. The associative property of multiplication says, as long as it's all multiplication, A plus B, the quantity A plus B times C equals A times the quantity B plus C. Notice how the factors A, B, and C stay in the exact same order. And the only thing that move is the grouping symbols, okay? That's, that's the associative property. So when you see associative property, I usually see two S's here and I associate those with the, with the grouping symbols. So eight times 15, I can't really do that in my head. Can you guys? Times two. Well, if we move the grouping symbols here because it's all multiplication, that might be easier. Let's take a look. So notice the eight, the 15, and the two. They stay in the same order. And the only thing that we're moving is the grouping symbols. Hey guys, 15 times two, that's 30. And then 30 times eight, well, three times eight is 24. So 30 times eight is 240. So that must mean this is 240 here and this is 240 here. And that's the associative property of addition and the associative property of multiplication. My name is Jason Jacobs. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you later guys, bye. Identity property of addition, what is it? Well, we're gonna get done with this one real quick. The identity property of addition says any number, let's say two plus zero is two. Notice when you add zero, it does not change the identity of the number. For example, x plus zero is x. X is an unknown, it's a variable, and uh, any number, let's say x plus zero, the identity doesn't change, it becomes x. So let's do these three, see if you can get these. I bet you can. Five plus zero is five, and that's because of the identity property of addition. Zero plus what is three? Well, because of the identity property of addition, that is three. Zero plus what is n? That's right, n. Zero plus n equals n. My name's Jason Jacobs, and this was the identity property of addition. Zero property of multiplication. That's what you're gonna learn today. Look at this, we have five times zero equals zero. So any number, let's say n times zero is zero. It's just that simple. Six times zero, well that's zero. That's the zero property of multiplication. Zero times seven, yeah, that's zero. N times zero, well, I guess we already did that. That's zero. Eight times what is zero? That's right, zero. Now, don't get it mistaken with the identity property of addition. The identity property of addition says like any number, let's say two, plus zero equals two. That's the identity property of addition, but this is the zero property of multiplication. Okay, so this one's the identity property of addition, and this one's the zero property of multiplication. And I bet you might get, some people get confused on that. But hey, not you now. And this was the zero property of multiplication. Distributive property. We're gonna learn all about the distributive property over addition and the distributive property over subtraction. My name's Jason Jacobs. It's an honor and pleasure to be here to teach you all about the distributive property. Hey, let's get going, guys. So the distributive property over addition says that if you have A, and then when it's right by the parentheses, guys, that means you multiply, okay? So A times the quantity B times C. So what I like to do, it, it looks like this. A times B plus, there's the over addition part, and then you go A times C. So A times B plus A times C. So basically, the A distributes to the B, and the A distributes to the C. A times B plus A times C, just like that. Now the distributive property over subtraction will have a subtraction sign like right here. 
So you go A times B minus A times C. A times B minus A times C. So let's look here. This is the distributive property over addition. So we go three times X, well that's 30X, plus three times two. Three times two, which is six. So they might make you do this. Three times X plus three times two, and then go to that. All right? My six looks a little weird, because I was writing three at first. So three X plus six. Again, the three distributes to the X, and the three distributes to the two. All right, and remember, when it's right next to the parentheses, that means you're multiplying. They might even have a multiplication symbol here. Why do you think we don't have a multiplication symbol here? Because it kind of looks like the variable X, right? So anyway, this is distributive property over subtraction because of the subtraction sign here. Two times X minus two times four. I find the arrows really help, guys. So two times X, two times X, minus two times four. So that simplifies to two X minus eight. Two X minus eight, right there. Oh, common mistake that some people do is they'll say, like for example, in this one, three X plus six is nine X. Wrong, wrong. These are unlike terms. If I were to model this out, I'm actually gonna show you how to model this one out in just a second. And I'll explain like and unlike terms, guys. Hey, this is a pretty advanced one here. You guys think you can do it? I think you can do it. Notice we're distributing over one, two, three terms. Terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So it's not too hard. We just go the four distributes to the x squared, the four distributes to the three x, and the four distributes to the four. So let's do it, guys. Four times x squared is four x squared plus four times three X is 12 X plus four times four is 16. So notice how we distributed it out and we get four X squared plus 12 X plus 16. And we can't combine, this is a different term, that's a different term and that's a different term. So an X plus two, this is X plus two. And how many of these X plus twos do I have? I have three guys. So watch this, x plus two, and another x plus two. I have one, two, three x plus twos. Notice x plus two three times equals one, two, three x's and six circles. So that's a model of it. Guys, I'm gonna do some for you right now. So get out a paper and pencil, and I'm gonna give you three problems to do, and you can do it for your distributive property lesson today. There they are, guys. Pause the video and do it. I'll do a little dance while we wait. Pause the video. All right, did you pause the video? Hope so. Okay, guys, let's do it. Here we go. So you distribute the four to the X. So you have four times X and four times three. So for this one, you get four X plus 12, four X plus 12. This was the distributive property over addition. Now this one's the distributive property over subtraction. So seven times X minus seven times two. And you have seven X minus 14. And now for the hardest one, let's see if you guys got it. the five distributes to all three terms inside the parentheses. And we have five times X squared is five X squared plus five times seven is 35 X plus five times three is 15. So we have five X squared plus 35 X plus 15 there. Distributive property, part two. Hey, this is part two to learning all about the distributive property. If you missed part one, I'll, I'll quickly show you. We have the distributive property over addition here. Two times the quantity, X plus five. So we would go two times X plus two times five. You see how the two distributes all the way over. So we have two X plus 10. 
two X plus 10 there. Two times X is two X, two times five is 10. All right, now, sometimes you'll get problems like this without variables. In this case, if they want this shown in the distributive property way, we gotta find a common factor. The greatest common factor would be the best one. So what's the greatest common factor of 14 and 35? What goes into both 14 and 35 evenly for both of them? Did you get seven? Seven's correct. So seven factors in there, and now you have this here. So just like I did here, we're kind of going from this point to this point. Seven times what is 14? If you said two, you're correct. Two goes here, good job. Now seven times what is 35? If you said five, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Good, so seven times five is 35. So 14 plus 35 is the same as seven times two plus five. So without all the like lines and everything, seven times two plus, the quantity two plus five. This equals this. Now, eight X plus 16. What's the greatest common factor of eight X and 16? What goes into both eight and 16? Eight does. So we're gonna factor out eight. Eight times what equals eight X? Eight times what equals eight X? That's right. X, just X. Eight times X is eight X. Plus eight times what is 16? Eight times two, you got it. Eight times two is 16. So this would be your answer right here. 12X and 20. 12X plus 20. What's the greatest common factor of 12 and 20? If you said four, you're correct. So four factors out. Now, four times what equals 12x? That's right, three x. Four times three x is 12 x. Plus, and then four times what is 20? Five. So four times the quantity three x plus five equals 12x plus 20. They're equivalent expressions. So now, 3x plus 18, you guys try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause it, see if you get it. I do a little dance. Okay. What goes into both 3x and 18? Did you say three? That's right. So three, and then three times what is 3x? So x plus, if this were a minus, you would put minus a subtraction sign. Three times what equals 18? That's right, six. So it's really just the reverse of this one. That's the distributive property part two, guys. My name is Jason Jacobs. Please like and subscribe, and I'll check you out on our next math video. Keep doing your math, guys. Bye.